My name's Kristen. Yes. All right, so this, um, I'm grateful for this little saying because it's more than just this saying, but I'll read it first and then I'll tell you what this saying means to me because it's been weighing on my heart ever since my mom said today's thankful day at church. It's the tree of life. It did come with a little charm, but it was lost somewhere, so someone else has it now, and hopefully it gives them inspiration as this card gives to me. It says, celebrate life's victories, no matter how small they may be. Stand proud, you matter. Let your light shine for all to see. Strong roots produce beautiful leaves. Blessings surround us along the way. When you color your world with kindness, you'll find happiness in each day. And what this signifies to me and what was weighing on my heart, which was, I was truly grateful for and will always be genuinely grateful for, is the serenity prayer. Because if it wasn't for that prayer every single day, I would not be here today. 14 years ago, I fully surrendered myself to that prayer, understanding every single word and every single sentence it meant, because that first sentence to me was like, ha ha, I'll show you. But 14 years ago, God said, I'll show you. And every single day he did. And if it wasn't for that serenity prayer, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have my two beautiful children that you've all known since every other weekend, <laughs> since my mom brought him them here. And after the year that I've been through, it definitely would not be here if it wasn't for that prayer. So every day I'm thankful for the serenity prayer. And so that's why when this was in my wallet, I thought of putting it on the table. So thanks for making me be the second one. First is the worst and second is the best. <laughs> The good news is you can just sit back and enjoy the rest of the morning. There you go. I saw Amy bring this up and I said, you're not the only one that's thankful for this cookbook. The people who receive the goodies cooked from it are the real ones that are thankful. Well, whew, I feel like I'm going to be a little emotional. So I brought this this morning because, yes, it is a cookbook. Um, and the reason that I brought it is because I am thankful for my mother-in-law. <sighs> um, this is her cookbook that was given to her by her brother when she was very young. And some of my very, very favorite memories that I have are with my mother-in-law in the kitchen. Um, when I married into this family, um, I am not Italian. I may look it, but I am not. But I married into a very Italian family. Um, I knew how to cook, but definitely not Italian food, the way that my husband was used to. And my mother-in-law um, has lovingly showed me how to make some pretty good sauce. Yes, Ma? How to make very tender and not bitter broccoli rob. We last night made rabbit cacciatore together in the kitchen, and it was very good. She has just taught me so many things. Um, it brings me such joy to spend those times with her in the kitchen. And I know that so many people don't maybe have that kind of relationship with their in-laws, and so I feel very thankful to have that. I have watched my mother-in-law go through so many difficult things in life, and her faith has not wavered. She has stayed close to the Lord well, she lost her husband to pancreatic cancer and then her daughter at 53 to pancreatic cancer. She has been through four types of cancer herself. And I still see her so strong. Her grandchildren just adore her. And she now cares for three of those grandchildren every day. And she gets up and she cooks for them and cleans for them and takes care of them. And I can remember when I first met her, um, I, you know, we maybe couldn't, um, it took me a little time to get to know her so that we could talk. And now, forget it, we can just talk about everything and just spend those times in the kitchen. And so for me, Ma, I am very, very thankful for you, and I love you.
that and praying that it would get better, but I guess that really wasn't the Lord's plan for me, but that's okay. I'm learning how to adjust. I have to, so that's okay. God, some God, sometimes God says yes to healing, and sometimes he says no, and he has his purpose and his reason for that, so I'm not going to question that. But what I'm thankful for today, the most thankful for, is salvation and forgiveness, forgiveness of sin. And I had written my notes in, in a Bible study that I was studying, and hopefully I can read this to you and not bear with me <laughs> with my eyes, but yes. Um, it is written in Isaiah 118, though your sins are scarlet, I will make them white as snow. How do you make sins go from scarlet to white? Sins are sins because they have already been committed. They're past, they're part of the past, and the past is finished. The only way to alter a sin would be to cause the past to change. Can God do that? Can he change the past? He actually lives in the present, the past, and the future all at the same time, so yes, he can. Um, the first recorded miracle of Jesus was the changing of water into wine. But wine is only wine if it's aged. But the wine of the miracle, it had no past to be aged. So how did that happen? So in a sense, it had to be given a new past. And if God can give a past to where there was no past, then he can remove a past where there once was one, which is pretty amazing. So salvation is undying the scarlet sin and make it white. God doesn't just forgive the scarlet sin and pretend it isn't sin. He changes it. He changes the past, and by that, changes its reality. God brought time into existence, and God can bring time out of existence. He seen my past. He saw me before I was born. He saw me in my mother's womb. He seen my life as it goes, and he's already seen me die. So sin isn't everything the same. It's not that it's everything the same once he forgives us in spite of it. It is, it has become as white as snow and it never, as if you never sinned. And sin, our sin becomes white because he can change it. But it goes farther than that. That's the miracle of his forgiveness of our sin. It goes even more than that. It's deeper than that. And when he forgives us, I'm just so grateful that he forgives me because, yeah, I'm a sinner. I'm here standing here today only because he's forgiven me and I have salvation. I know where I'm going. If I die tomorrow, I know where I'm going. Thank you, Lord. I'm so thankful for that. Salvation, forgiveness, forgiveness of sin. But he also expects us to forgive one another as he's forgiven us. Sometimes that's not very easy to do. Sometimes when somebody's hurt you so deeply, sometimes when that happens, it's so hard to forgive. You know you have to, and I know every time I forgive that I feel so much better afterwards, like a whole burden has been lifted off of me. So I know as hard as it is to forgive when you've been hurt, you need to forgive. God has forgiven you, and he loves you, and he wants the best for you. Sometimes what we think our best is going to be, like with my eyes, it sometimes isn't, but that's, o but that's okay. It's okay. It, he loves me just the way I am, with all my faults, with all my failures, but he has made me who I am, and he loves who I am, and I forgive those who hurt me. And this morning when I was doing my Bible study this morning in my devotionals, he laid it on my heart to forgive this person that I don't even know who this person is. I have no idea who this person is, but, I have to, but I've forgiven this person. I was the victim yesterday of fraud, and it happens to everyone. 
happen to me. I'm usually the cautious person. I don't, I don't trust anything. I, I'm so skeptical about everything. So if it can happen to me, it can happen to it can happen to you. And I, I didn't know. Unsuspectingly, I thought I received a email from Pastor Jim. And I love Pastor Jim. And I know I've been with him for a very long time here. I've been here since the very beginning of this church actually that's how far back I go I make myself sound old now I guess I am but <laughs> but yes from the very beginning and I love Pastor Jim he's been so wonderful for our church we couldn't have asked for a better pastor a more understanding and loving pastor so when I got an email from him and he told me he sent me on an errand to get some gift cards for some people at church he wanted to surprise them for maybe I thought well maybe for Thanksgiving or for whatever I didn't know and so I did I had no money to buy it because I, I don't have any money, and I, so I had to use a credit card to buy the gift cards. And well, I got home, and afterwards, I texted Tim, Pastor Jim, and found out that he says, "No, my email has been hacked. I haven't been communicating with you email." So I'm like, "Oh no!" So I don't know who this person is who did this, and how many other people he's done it to. He's done it too. I don't know. But I forgive this person, and what I'm asking for now is this person can receive repentance and salvation just like I have. This person is loved by God just as much as he loves me and loves you. So please, Lord, forgive this person, and please bring him into salvation, Lord. Let, him, let this person know that you love him and ask for forgiveness that he can repent of the sin that was committed, Lord, just like we all have to. Each one of us has to make that decision on our own to be forgiven. I pray for this person, Lord, and I thank you for this church family and our, our dear pastor. And I feel sorry. I'm sorry for pastor. I'm sure he must feel awful that, <laughs> that somebody used his email to scam someone else. But it happens. Things happen. And it's okay. It's okay. God is good. And I have a feeling when something bad happens, he always turns it into good. Somehow, some way, he'll turn it into good. So I'm okay with that. Thank you, Lord. I was going to do this later, but I might as well do it now. Yes, I got hacked yesterday. And um, somebody used an email address, pastorjim.communitychapel at gmail.com, and sent you all a bunch of emails. And uh, I had no control over that. I'm sorry for the inconvenience of that. Uh, my email is pastorjim at communitychapel.org. So um, I guess a good lesson for all of us is it's important to look at those email addresses and see who is actually trying to communicate with us. And um, proactive, we've taken steps to uh, hopefully prevent that from happening in the future. But um, anyway, it happens, and I'm, I apologize for my part, which was, um, I don't know. Um, but <laughs> and being alive, I guess, breathing and, and using email. So um, that, was my, that was my culpability in it. So anyway, anyway, thank you for your understanding. I don't agree with you. I'm not thankful for mine. <laughs> it's a necessary evil to me, but Dottie loves hers. <laughs> and I can explain it to you. you will. My point's twofold today. So we'll get to the cell phone in a second. So, first of all, I want to thank everybody here. I love my, I'm blessed with my community chapel family. I get to worship with my parents and my brother and my nephews. I used to be able to worship with my son, but he moved away on me. <laughs> but it's all good. He's in a wonderful church now. Um, I am thankful for the men in this church, how they guided my son and helped him become the man he could be and the husband he could be for Elizabeth. I am just so grateful he went through hard times and he could confide in me. And I want to let you know from the bottom of my heart, I am grateful for that. I am just thankful for everybody who volunteers here and how we make this church run and how we make this church a family. I, um, I've had, we've had a lot going on this year and it's all good. And we had an addition. And so, 
James and Elizabeth on their wedding day. So, my family's balanced out now, two women and two men. So, but they balance each other out. James can be a little more serious, and um, he has a fun side too, but Elizabeth is just so inviting and opening and loving, and they really work well together. I'll tell you a quick little story. They, James just got hired as a financial analyst, and when he got hired, part of the hiring process is Elizabeth and him had to go out to dinner with the two, part, two of the partners. One was the managing partner, and afterwards, I talked to James, and I said, how did it go? He goes, Elizabeth hugged Doug. He's the managing partner. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's good, I guess, right? Well, he did get the job. So, but, um, so yeah, so I, I'm grateful for everybody uh, who has helped with my son and always supported me. And now I'm cell phone. OK. It is a pain. I'm not going to, I knew you would, were going to think this, Jim, when I brought up. I'm going to be honest because I was going to look at you. And um, yes, it is a pain at times when you get emails that in the middle of the night or early in the morning. Um, I'm tethered to it for work. I have to get my email on here. I have teams on here for work so they can get a hold of me anytime. That's always fun, right? But. It connects me with people that I don't always get to see, especially working three days in Hartford. Um, I have a friend that I just, you know, I have a lot of coworkers, but this girl and I were developing a bond, and she had her, she was sharing her screen with me one day, and she took one of the, an application down, and her calendar was up, and I see a Bible study on there, and I go, Kirsten, you're a Christian? She goes, yes. I was just so excited in the sea of workers, you have to, you know, you're quiet about it, especially when you're, most of the stuff is on video because people are all over the country, so you don't get to see their expressions or anything. And we've been, come very close. And at our work, it, it's tough being a woman in IT, and she's struggling, and she's fairly new. And then the other, last Sunday morning, I had looked at my phone quick, and it came on my feed, and now I can't find it. I had pulled it up. Um, and she had been really struggling and um, just going through a hard time. And this came on my feed, and I go, this is, this is Kristen, Kirsten. Kirsten needs to he see this. And it's hearts, and it says, you are worthy, you're wonderful, you're inspiring, you're special. And so I said, I have to send this to her. And she replied back and said, wow, God sent this to me through you at the exact moment. God bless you, Dorothy. So you never know when God puts something on your heart and you need to send it. Also, And then the following Monday, my girlfriend Adrian had been on my heart, and so I called her on the way to work, hands-free. Um, and I said, I said, hey, how are you doing? She didn't sound good. She goes, I'm tired. I laid sod yesterday. I'm just feeling down and everything. So we started talking. And we started talking about James and how he got the job. And she got so excited. And by the end, she said to me, God put you on my heart to call me at this moment because I was really down. I was like a one or a two, and you brought me to a nine today. So you just never know when this is going to be a blessing to somebody. And somebody else here, I don't, is Lisa here? I saw her earlier. Um, my girlfriend Lisa started coming back to church, and what happened? Oh, there you are. <laughs> I thought I saw you over there before. Did I? Okay. <laughs> so we're in seasons with our friends sometimes, and we, our kids were little, we, they played together and everything, and then we kind of went apart. And then, I think it was a year ago, Lisa messaged me on the phone and said, hey, you want to go see Jesus Revolution together? So we went to see it, and we sat probably for a half hour after the movie in the theater, just talking, and it was like we never missed a beat. And so we're coming together, and I, I was saying, why don't you come back to me in chapel and everything? And she was praying about it and everything, and then one morning I come to church, and I'm like, who's sitting at the end of our aisle? Who's that lady, right? And then I realized it was Lisa, and I was so excited, and she has felt so, so much comfort in our church, you know? And also, the Sintos might be coming back, and Marie and I had a season that we didn't talk, and then we started talking, and she sends me such wonderful Bible, Bible verses, and, you know, is always praying for James and everything. So this, as annoying as it can be, can be... Um, 
a connection to friends we don't get to talk to a lot. So I am thankful for this, for that reason, not for other reasons, but for that reason. It helps me communicate with people and when I see a good verse, and you never know when somebody needs something. So this is not always bad. It's not always good, but it's not always bad, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. Who can resist a teddy bear? Radar? Yay. Good morning. All right, you want to tell them what happened? Or you want me to tell them? You want me to tell them? So we asked we asked Lydia and, and Jameson to give up some of their toys to needy children. And this was a gift from uh, one of my friends. And what's what's the teddy bear's name? Lauren the Teddy. Lauren the Teddy. That's an official title. And um, so she gave Lauren the Teddy up. But it turns out that they didn't need as many things as they they thought they needed. And so Lauren the Teddy came back. So you're grateful for things that were given up coming back. And we're so we're very grateful for Lauren the Teddy. And I'm very grateful for my three children, two of which I know have just huge hearts and a, a willingness to give and share and love. Good? Zoom, zoom. Oh, I thought it'd be Samuel. Oh, that's Sarah's car. No, it's not Sarah's car. She wishes. This is actually Samuel's. Um, all right, this is a bit of a stretch. Follow me to here. Okay. So, what kind of car is it? Thank you for asking, Samuel. This is a Porsche Carrera GT. All right, this is the kind of car that Paul Walker, the actor, was driving when he died. That's not what I'm thankful for, but. Paul Walker, probably most famously known for, anybody know what movies series he was in? He is in the Fast and the Furious, not that I watch him that often, but I know he was in there. And what's the, the key line that they always say in that movie, the key word? Family. There, yeah, I got there. So I'm thankful for family. Um, as many of you probably know, it's been a very interesting year for the Britain family. Um, and I'm, so I'm thankful for mostly for you guys as we've journeyed through this year. And um, it's actually the end of last year, but it was purchased this year. I want to thank Pam Famigletti, Scott Waller, as Stephen and Rachel, especially Pam. We went to many scary homes and scary places <laughs> for a long time before they bought their home in, I think, the end of January. And it's not just a home, it's a wonderful home. It's very, we're very fortunate to have it. And then a couple months after that, their daughter Hazel was born. Stephen and Rachel have a lovely daughter, Hazel. And I don't see the Ramseys here today, but the, many people have been very good. But the Ramseys have given Jen and I many of their, their um, things that they had for their grandchildren that we now use very faithfully and regularly. And then uh, in June, Sarah and her new husband, Jake, were married. We're very thankful for that. And we had the wedding here, and you guys were all super helpful. We had the wedding on a Saturday. And an hour after the wedding was done, this place looked like it was ready for church. Everybody from the wealthies washing the dishes to all of us setting up, it was really good. And then, um, I meant to read this earlier, but I'll read it now. Or to, as it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And as most of you know, now, we are now dealing with a different chapter in our lives as Stephen uh, has cancer and he just finished chemo this week and I'm very thankful that God's brought him to this point that we discovered it when we did but then you guys have been super helpful in reaching out and praying for him and, and Scott and many of you have reached out directly to him and I'm thankful so much for you guys and all that you've done thank you
they go together, yes? They go together. I'm not good at this. If you've been in our church for a while, you know that this is when the sobbing begins. Art and I are, yeah. Anyway, um, so I have two items that I put up here. Uh, one is um, my old, my backpacking, not that I'm able to do that much anymore, but a little Bible. And uh, the other is a picture of my mom and dad okay and my dad is no longer with us he's been gone for a while and my mom is in a nursing home um, nearby so I'm able to visit her quite a bit the Bible is here because um, when my dad was still alive I was um, my dad and I always had a, a pretty good relationship but there were some things I mean you know there's always some things right so um, I was, I had reached out to my dad, let's, you know, let's go to breakfast every other week on a Saturday. And we were, and unfortunately, you know, we all, this is not, you know, this is where, where my dad was at. My dad was pretty disappointed in some things in my life. And so breakfast was um, very difficult. My dad was a finger-pointing kind of guy, and he would go off on his list of things that he was disappointed or angry about. And, and I would go home, and I'd have dry heaves. Well, I'd have heaves without being dry because I would have tried to eat breakfast. And, and then, you know, going, preparing to go to breakfast was, I didn't want to keep going. I didn't want to keep doing it. Um, but... I was reading one day, and, and totally unrelated, I was just in my devotions and reading, and, and I realized, no, I need to keep doing this. I need to get that relationship that um, I needed with my dad. I needed to be able to talk about his relationship with the Lord. I needed, I needed to do this. I needed to do it for myself. The Lord told me I needed to do it for him. I needed to be his hands and feet. So I, you know, bucked up, and um, then one, the next, I think it might have been the next time, it might have been a couple times after, Dad was going over his agenda of things that he is angry about, and I just started laughing. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just started laughing. I said, what are you doing? We're trying to have, I'm trying to have this relationship, and I think you are too, and you're just bringing me out here. From that point on, my dad's time with me, our breakfast, there was healing. And I was um, able to work with my mom to keep him home through some very, very challenging times. Alan helped out as well. And, you know, in the end, I was able to pray with him. I was able to talk with him about his relationship, which was good with the Lord because he loved the Lord. And um, in and, and there was healing. And there was, as Rebecca said, the importance of forgiveness. There was forgiveness there. And um, it was beautiful. And if any, you know, I think about the gift that my dad gave me for lasting long enough, whatever, so that this healing could happen. Fast forward a few years, and, you know, now it's my mom. And, you know, every family has its dysfunction and its challenges, and every person has their challenges. And I definitely, if, if you've been in my prayer circle, you know I've had some challenges with my mom. And um, now I was her caregiver for a while, and uh, it got too hard for me. And uh, she got really sick at one point and was hospitalized and then went over to River Glen. And I, I, I realized at that point, because I got sick, because she had been sick and I had been with her 24 hours a day, um, I couldn't do that anymore. And um, I, I had to move her out of her home and keep her at River Glen. And um, so she's been there a little over a year now and they care for her so well. And she's really become a different person and we've been able to have conversations that you can have with somebody who has no short-term memory left and things like that. But I've realized, again, 
I was having a hard time visiting because she, because I've had some challenges in my relationship with my mom. And what a work God is doing. And what an amount of forgiveness I am feeling. And I just, um, that's what I'm thankful for this year. It's come full circle. I've been able, to, I was able to have that relationship with my dad and feel a sense of forgiveness and feel again a sense of true, true, unconditional love. And it's happening with my mom too. So I'm thankful for whatever path I've had to go on to get here. I'm thankful for that. And that they've lived long enough for me to do it. Anyway, God bless you. See, I don't see Greg and Ina here. So. <laughs> this is my granddaughter, Isabel. I'm always thankful for her. Morning, church. Um, I brought this as a symbol of being thankful for uh, medicine and medical attention because since June, <laughs> our family has been pretty busy using um, medical um, care. In June, my son Andrew and my daughter-in-law Emily gave us another beautiful grandson, Lucas, so we were, were very thankful for that. And um, then in October, Scott got a new hip. <laughs> so we're very thankful for the care that he received. And then a week after he had his hip, our daughter Lexi and her husband John gave us another grandson, Caleb. <laughs> and I'm very thankful for Caleb. And um, then just last week, our grandson Owen had tubes put in his ears to help him not have uh, ear infections and to feel better. So we've, we've had a busy six months and we're very thankful for the medical attention that the extended Waller family has uh, been given. So thank you, church, and thank you for all your prayers. This is a wonderful family, and um, we can always count on you for prayer and love, and we thank you for that. I don't recognize these people. Oh, no, I get it. That long, eh? How long, really? picture of Charlie and I many, many years ago, and uh, I just wanted to share that with you because it made me smile. About six months ago, uh, for the wedding, Liz and James's wedding, they asked for a picture, and so when we went through the pictures, then I saw this one, it just made my heart swell, and so I need that right now be honest with you, but I am thankful for so many things. This isn't even my thankfulness. This is just my introduction to it. Um, I'm thankful for an awesome husband that God gave me. He's patient, he's loving, and he's a Christian man. 
I'm thankful for my beautiful family, and I'm thankful for this church. It's been such a blessing to all of us, like Dottie mentioned, with James and people that mentored him, and I'm looking forward to that also with my other two grandchildren that come, come to church. Okay, now to the real story. First, I have to share, this is going to be, and believe me, this is hard, and if God hadn't kept tapping me on the shoulder, and I said, oh, no, and uh, as much as I love fish, I didn't want to end up in the belly of a whale, so here I am. Um, I started, a, about a year ago, I started a journey, not a journey that I would have ever asked for, what a journey anyway. And what happened in last October, I went to my primary doctor and he was retiring. I told, I had gone for um, stress test twice before, came out fine, but I still was getting um, difficulty walking uh, with breathing. So he suggested I see a cardiologist. And that's where this journey begins. And we know, and, and I've read these verses over and over, and I'm not even going to try and tell you what verses they are, but in this world we're going to have troubles and tribulations. But God's with us. And so that journey started with a cardiologist. And after many tests, it was determined that I had three blocked arteries in my heart. One 100%, 170, and 140. The decision was made that I go in, they have an angioplasty. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot the most important part. Please know, this is not about me. This is about God, so keep that in the front of your mind. I just have to share this other part so that you understand how, I know you all know, awesome <laughs> our God is, but anyway. So I went to the hospital, and the, um, the idea was they were going to put three stents in. And so I went through the procedure, and I came out, and the surgeon came in about an hour later and said, we can't put any stents. We didn't put any stents in. Now, mind you, uh, my appointment was for March 12th. The uh, cardiologist's office called and said, you can't wait till March 12th. You've got to get that moved up. So we got it moved up to the 1st of March. And now here I am leaving the hospital, knowing the urgency, but knowing nothing was done. All right. That, that was difficult and hard to understand. I had an appointment with the cardiologist um, five days later. And Charlie and I went, and she just said, Charlie said, does she need open heart surgery? She said, no, we'll treat it with medication. So we're on our way with that. Um, had a lot of uh, health issues. I don't know, experienced a lot with the medication. So then uh, I had to meet my new primary. That was interesting. She um, gave me a diagnosis that, that I cannot even share here, but I will tell you that it struck me to my core. And it really, I, I don't know how to describe it, but the fear and the anxiety was just unbelievable. And it was some nights I was afraid to even close my eyes and it was consuming me. And after a few weeks of that, I realized this isn't from God. God doesn't want you to live in fear. And so with God's help, I was able to get beyond that. And although this past summer has been hard because of a lot of the... Uh, physical effects, and I blame it mostly on medication, but anyway, um, the primary, 
my new primary wanted me to see a kidney doctor. So it took about three and a half months to get that appointment. And when I went to see the kidney doctor, she was awesome. She was, I'm telling you, I've ne never met a doctor that was so caring and just, she was just unbelievable. Spent an hour with Charlie and I, so you know, doctors don't do that, right? And so at the end of our visit, she said, you're in stage three kidney failure. And because God had already given me that peace, that it was something I wasn't happy about, but I didn't fall apart like before. Because in Carol's own humanness, I would be in a puddle on the floor right now. But because of God, I can stand up and share this with you because God has just given me the peace that's unbelievable, the peace that passes all understanding. And yes, I kept reading the verses, and, and I know them, but I know I'm going to mess them up. So um, I, I know everybody in here has heard them or read them in their Bible. But that's why I'm here, to praise God. Because there's many times that in my life, and I'm ashamed to say, that things were happening, and Carol tried to take care of them. I'd oftentimes give them to God, but I'd take them right back because I had to take care of this. You know, whether it was the sickness in my family or something like that. And now, I know it's God. And no, I don't know where this journey's going but I know who's with me every step of the way. And that gives me the strength to go on day by day. I won't say everything health-wise is perfect, but it's good because God's there with me. So thank you, and I love you all. I, ha I have to tell you that Jim just loves that Carol speaks of herself in the third person. So. <laughs> and I love Carol, too. So. <laughs> Good morning, church. <laughs> I'm glad to see you. My name is Denise. I always say that because sometimes when I first came here, I thought, now, nah, which one is that? <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> anyway, I'm here for um, the reason that yesterday I was praying, and I hadn't decided what I was thankful for. And I was reading my Bible, and the Lord said, I can tell you what you're thankful for. And I thought, okay. <laughs> and I've often been the one that said I was thankful for the Bible. And he said, well, you are thankful for the Bible. I'm particularly thankful for this Bible. It's called the Passion Translation, which is a different translation. Um, it's still being done, and the whole idea of it was the man felt he really, the um, translator, wanted to get to the heart of God. What was the heart of God saying in this passage? So it, um, it's just different. Often he'll say, um, the Greek word for this is thus and thus, and that means this, or he'll say, the Aramaic in this translation and it's always a little different than what my Bible is saying my other one my regular New American Standard Bible so I just like this translation this is only um, let's see it's um, the New Testament Psalms Proverbs and Song of Songs so the whole New Testament is in here and then he's still working on the next part you can go to his website and it'll tell you where he is at this point in translating it. But it just means, um, to me, it's more the heart of God, and that was important. And the second part of this is, um, Sue Johnson and I um, co-facilitated co a group on Thursday morning, the Women's Bible Study, and this year they decided that, that we would do Revelation, and I thought, <laughs> I don't know anything about Revelation, and I don't think this is such a good idea. But they all said, oh, yeah, we're going to do this. This will be fine. Well, and we, we launched into it. We're using David Jeremiah's book on Revelation. And it's kind of an overview of Revelation. 
so getting into it was a little difficult for me because of <laughs> I just didn't understand what all those things were that, you were <laughs> that they were going through. But the more I read it, the more I thought, I don't know how to explain it. Um, yesterday, I read through the whole thing. I decided after reading some of the beginning of it, I'm like, oh my word, how long does this go on? And I wanted to see how it came out, and I kind of knew how it came out, but I had to read it for myself. And I thought, wow, what I realized was the power of God is incredible. When you see what he brings on in the end, oh my word, I mean, I spent a long time as a therapist, and I heard about stories that were just very, very difficult to hear of man's inhumanity to man. Just, and I remember thinking, I wonder if there's going to be any judgment for these people, especially the, like people like um, child traffickers, that kind of evil. And after reading this, I thought, mm, there is a day of reckoning. God's wrath will be poured out on people that were as evil as some of the people that I heard about. So the um, strength of God, the power of God to do things, and the justice of God. God is perfectly just. He knows everybody's heart, and he's going to reward you according to your deeds, and he's also going to <laughs> pour his wrath out on people that have been absolutely terrible. And just that, the justice of God was strong, the strength of God. And then at the end, when I get to the end of it, you probably think, didn't you ever read this before? Well, I did, but I didn't get it in my heart. How beautiful it is, how God redeems everything, how it's going to be just splendid with all kinds of, beyond anything we could think of in heaven in the, in the days to come, in the golden years. So it's going to be, um, I think, beyond my expectations, and I think that's what I'm grateful for. The whole thing, the book of Revelation, what it's taught me, at the beginning, somebody, I guess somebody read it, that um, it's the only book in the Bible that you will receive a blessing from God if you read it. And as I was struggling at the beginning, I used to think, well, I guess so. Somebody should give me for a blessing for plowing through all these famines and all kinds of awful things. But now as I see the end of it, I think, oh, it is a great blessing. So that's what I'm thankful for today. Should have given him notice. Heads up. Hmm? Good morning. So that, that is the main thing I am thankful for. Um, I'm sure a lot of you don't know who half of them are, but I'm sure you can recognize a few of them. Um, this group, obviously I'm very thankful for this church, my family, my wife, and all my friends. Um, she's not a part of this group. But um, <laughs> I'm very, I'm thankful for this group just we've all been through a lot with each other we all know each other very well I consider them my second family you know that, that makes sense um, about 350 days ago I did the math earlier um, my brother had passed away and it was on a Sunday it was at our young adults obviously the news is not something you want to hear but it was very reassuring just in the environment that I was in and the group that I was with. Because otherwise, I tend to, th I think, or I look back a lot and wonder if I wasn't in this group, how that, how that event would have affected me today and where I would be. So the Lord has really blessed me with this group and helped keep my head on street and I chose my brother's old necklace the cross was my addition to it but I wear it or I hang it up most times now to remind myself that you know 
he's there. He's watching. He's probably causing some sort of party up there. But, um, yeah, that's really it. Thank you. Sweet taters. Yes, this is a sweet potato. This one was chewed on by a bowl or something. And unfortunately, we did lose some of them to that. Uh, thankfulness is tough because you wake up in the morning and there's just a whole menu of things to be thankful about, right? You breathe, you, you take the dog for a walk, you know, it's, it's all good. But this year, um, I'm just remembering that in 2017 into 2018, this, this church had a major crisis. We were meeting at the high school, and I thought the church was spiraling down. I, th I thought we were done. And I can say that now, right? Um, I was serving as an elder at the time, and we, we knew we had to do something, so we started looking. We have the property on Judd Road, but we, we, the price of building had gone up so much that there was no way we were going to build on there now. So we started looking either for some place to rent or buy. And some, sometime ask one of us how this all laid out, because it, it could only have been God putting our feet, you know, here's the path, lighting the way. And we ended up here, 31 acres, this beautiful pond. Um, so I love to grow food, mainly because I like to eat food, but also because I, wa I want to be able to provide people with food who need food, right? And I also want us to learn how important healthy food is, because we're getting poisoned. And I won't get political here, but there's bad, our, our food system is not healthy. And growing food and eating it as close to the source as possible is the best thing you can do for yourself. So we started the garden. It's a, it's a gravelly, rocky mess over there. Um, Pat's friend, Scott, br brought us 30 yards of horse manure. Um, he's been doing that for three years now, and it, what a blessing. You leave it sitting there for a couple months, and it turns into soil. It's beautiful. So, you know, mixing that up, we're, we're creating a, a really great thing over there. And this year was great because, you know, Dave and Sue and Jerry and Dawn and Eric and John and Pam, um, Carmen, uh, Diane and Sue, and I think that's pretty much everybody. But And yes, the weeds got way ahead of us this year, but I think everybody I know that gardens says the same thing. So I was able to, um, Jim was able to take 30 pounds of these down to Seymour Oxford Food Bank this week. I threw in another uh, 25 pounds uh, Friday from of potatoes that our son Ian grew. He gave us 80 pounds to distribute. Tomorrow I'll take 25 pounds of these and 25 pounds of potatoes up to Teen Challenge. I um, also took uh, 20 pounds each to the Southbury Food, Food Bank. So we're making a little impact and it's a good thing. And on top of that, there's a lot of these out in the kitchen. There's bags there. They're not all big, big, beautiful sweet potatoes like this. I gave the, the best ones I gave away. That's, that's my version of first fruits. Give the best. But so th that's why I had two of them, because most of them are in this size range. Personally, I like this size, because you split them in half and throw them on the grill, and it's good stuff. So thank you. Yeah, the sweet potatoes are for us to, to take. So, you know, Thanksgiving's coming. 
they mash up, little ones mash up just as well as big ones. So help yourself. Um, there's bags out there too. There's a big box that has the ones that were chewed on. You don't have to take those, but they're fine. You just cut off the bad part and, and they're just fine. So thank you. Anybody that wants to get involved, come talk to me. You know, we can double the size of that thing. We got room out there. We could feed a lot of people. And, and Alan, thank you for allowing me the privilege to deliver them because they love fresh food. <laughs> they, they, they go nuts for it. Somebody graduated. Somebody's sleeping, too. to put a rug in our home and I don't know why the desire was so strong I don't know why I was so fixated on it but I really wanted a rug and I felt pretty silly about it because if you have a column of wants and needs a rug definitely falls into the want column um, and I was talking with a Christian mentor of mine and she said well we'll just wait and see what the Lord will do and I, I admittedly chuckled because again a rug is not is not a need um, well, a couple months later, it was my birthday, there was a big sale on a rug, and Paul and I talked about it, and we decided to go for it. And the rug arrived, and it was, it was awesome. Um, and it had, in the very corner of it, a finger-sized manufacturing error. And um, I thought, well, okay, I'll write to the company, and I'll see if they might give us a discount, or maybe we could get a replacement rug. And they wrote back, and they said to us, um, how would you like a rug for free? And I thought, wait and see what the Lord will do. <laughs> um, you know, I'm thankful for the rug. I'm thankful for the rug, of course. But when I walk on the rug, I'm really, really thankful for the reminder and that I can remind my children that this is not our rug. This is the Lord's rug. And um, I'm just so grateful for a God that cares not just about our needs, but also about those little teeny tiny desires of our hearts and saw me in that moment in time and thought, yeah, I'm going to let them have a rug. Hello. Just bear with me. I'm not a public speaker, so this is kind of horrifying for me. Um, huh? <laughs> Singing is one thing. Speaking, whole another ball game for me. Um, this is my symbol that I have. Um, wow, words are hard to articulate. Um, I chose this as my symbol of Thanksgiving because, or thankfulness in the season of Thanksgiving, um, because. God has really blessed me with a wonderful community of friends and other bodies of believers, including this church. And I'm incredibly thankful for each and every one of you for your impact in um, each other's lives, as well as just for the kingdom of God in general. Um, and one thing that um, when I was a lot younger that I, I prayed for about a lot was that God would bring a good community as well as good and godly friendships into my life. Um, what I didn't realize, even at that point when I prayed that, just how continuous God would be in answering that prayer. Um, and if you want to put up that picture of the young adults again, that would be great. Um, he blessed me with just so many wonderful people, like the ones in this wonderful photo, and even the one giving me bunny ears. I really... I, I really am thankful for, for John Britton and Jen Britton in a lot of ways. Are they? <laughs> it looks suspiciously familiar. I, I wonder who that, who that could be. Um, but even for the Brittons for hosting us on Sunday nights and all of the, um, 
just sacrifices that they do and all the love and care that they have for us, whether they realize how impactful it's been. I'm gonna start crying. Um, how impactful it's been for me, just all the love that you guys give. <laughs> They're happy tears, I promise. <laughs> um, but as well for uh, Cody and Jenna, who actually got me this while they were on their, their honeymoon, right? So I'm very thankful for my wonderful friends there too. Um, and yeah, as well as just a shout out to my mom and to Jim for all the amazing things they do behind the scenes in my life. And I love you, so um, thank you guys. I wasn't planning on crying this much, but here we are, but it's okay. Um, so I'm just incredibly thankful for just that continued answered prayer for God to place the right people and the right godly people in my life. So thank you. Have you done the whole thing? Okay. 1,700 miles, right? Wow. There you go. Ah, well, first and foremost, I'm thankful for my, uh, my Lord and my husband and my family. <laughs> it must be contagious. <sighs> um, Psalm 133.1. Behold... How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And um, for me this year, um, it's been a great year for fellowship. And I, it's, fellowshipping is so important. You heard Denise talk about the women's Bible study. We study the Bible, but we're a sisterhood. And the fellowship and how close we've become has been awesome. Uh, this is um, my dream is to do the whole Appalachian Trail. You know, family, work, whatever got in the way. And then I got to a point in my life where it was like, I can't do this alone. You know, you need someone to spot cars for you. And God put this incredible Christian woman into my life, same age, everything's the same. We hike the same. We, and so we're doing the Appalachian Trail section by section. Um, and she's just wonderful. But the fellowship with her, she is a spiritual retreat leader. So just to have her in my life. And the third, uh, I'm a quilter. And um, through Acts 4, I have now joined a, a group called Common Thread. And it's a group of Christian women who quilt. And once a month we meet and we are hand quilting a quilt for a woman in need. But um, the fellowshipping, the sharing and caring, you can't do it without fellowshipping with each other. So um, that I'm thankful for fellowshipping this year. So Jim made me wait so long that everything that was lined up in my head, I've sweated it all out of place. <laughs> <laughs> this is a poem. I didn't write it because I'm not that talented, but it's, the, um, it's called Mother or Ode to Mother. It's been around for like 100 years. You've probably had Mother's Day cards with it on it. And um, I'll be 65 next month. And uh, I always, every few years, I think to myself, how did I make it this far? Uh, I've told a lot of people I know that I have a, a severe inferiority complex and lack of self-confidence. And I've had that since I can remember. So how did I make it? And it's because a lot of people will say they, they have the best mother. But I, I can say that God gave me the best mother that I needed because I have those issues um, in spite of my mother, not because of my, but of my mother. Um, growing up I, in Southbury, I had the best childhood anyone could ever want. We didn't have a lot of money. I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, we did all kinds of 
stuff. And my, my mother had, a, had, had and has a, a combination of grace and uh, unconditional love and mercy, and she definitely displayed that when I almost burnt down the center of Southbury. That's the story that <laughs> I'll tell you. Um, but she also had a side of her that uh, exhibited discipline, but the way she did it, I, I, ne I didn't think of it as discipline. And one, uh, I thought years later that um, a, lot of, a lot of things that uh, motivated me was that I, I didn't want to disappoint my mother because of how, who she was. And of course, I did a few things in my life to, to uh, disappoint her. But um, I'm just thankful to God that my mother, who had her mother died when she was four. And had her father died at a young age, she had a tough life. And Jeremy gets sick. The whole time she's, she's been steadfast. And I, I thank God that she's my mother because I don't know if another mother if I would have been here today and uh, she even said one time she said to me that uh, when I was small she said uh, she thought maybe that someday I'd be a minister it was like it took me 35 years to believe in Jesus so. but I'm an elder that's close I guess. <laughs> anyway so this is the poem. It says, To one who bears the sweetest name and adds a luster to the name, to the same, who shares my joys, who cheers when sad, the greatest friend I ever had. Long life to her, for there's no other can take the place of my dear mother. And his mother is here today to hear those words. Scott, come and get your Bible. Look at him, no cane. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Um, so part two of the, the, the hip uh, saga that my wife started. Uh, as most of you know, or many of you know, I had a hip replacement. And thanks to all the prayers and everything, it was successful. And here I am, no, no crutches, no, no anything. So no bungee jumping yet, but we're, we're you know, we're, we're, we're hopeful. Um, but anyway, it was, it was very, very interesting. You know, with every trial that we have, if you're paying attention, you're gonna learn something. And I got to say that, that I learned something. Absolutely. My life changed so much, so quickly. I mean, I was used to doing anything, everything. Running the backhoe, doing this, doing that. And all of a sudden, I can't even take the garbage out. It was that bad. And uh, it, gave me, uh, it maybe gave me pause, and it gave me such empathy for people with handicaps. All of a sudden, I'm thinking about, you know, the, uh, the soldier who comes back from Afghanistan. He's got no legs. He's got to put his legs on just to go to the bathroom in the morning, just to get up and get going. I mean, you know, I used to joke around and pull into the pull into a movie theater or the grocery store or something like that, and I just tell my wife, I said, you know, the cripples, they get all the good parking spaces. And I don't think like that <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but when it came time to think about, let's see, a symbol of symbol of grief, gratefulness. I couldn't come up with any one thing that covered all of it. And uh, I was trying to, you know, what, could, what one thing would give, would, would represent what I'm grateful for? And all of a sudden, Bible came up. So, um, Just get to my uh, my page here. Pardon me, sir. I thought I had this. Uh, 
So I started thinking about it. You know, within the Bible, there's so many things. There's 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 trials, there's tribulation. There's 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 teaching. There's um, one one thing that comes out of it very clearly is that within the pages, it defines the qualities of character. Just one of many things. And so some of the qualities of character um, are, are love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, truth, discipline, grace, and mercy, just to mention a few. So I thought about that. I said, you know what? You take all those qualities and you mix them all up and you put them out there, and what do you have? You have my wife, Debbie. Because <laughs> what she's gone through over the last few months, I couldn't have done. So that's, that's my uh, symbol of grat uh, gratefulness. Thank you. You know, I am like the second to last to go, and like I just see him hover over and then grab the item behind it or in front of it. Um, my symbol of thankfulness is um, my little niece, Hazel. I love her so much. She's um, just a joy in our life, and uh, she's exactly what we needed, especially with um, Stephen's chemo. Just we see her every um, Friday, and she just, when she smiles, she makes you smile. And she just... It's just awesome seeing her grow and just watching her go through the steps of life as she's getting to crawling soon, which we're gonna need to put some baby gates up. <laughs> but um, it's just, I'm thankful for God, or I'm thankful for Hazel. And I'm just thankful that God put her in our lives because um, she's, we needed her in this time. Thank you. ask the musicians to and invite Pam to come on up. It's that time of year. Pam and Gina. Hi everyone. Um, we are just so grateful. Gina and I have been doing Project Angel Tree for many, many years now. Um, it is Prison Fellowship Ministry. Um, they call, they get together with the chaplains, the prisoners, and they choose, they write down what the kids would like and what they would like for the kids to receive. But at that point, they don't know too much. So uh, we call the families to find out what would be the best gift for their children. We buy these gifts on behalf of the prisoners and they, this way they get to give something to their child while they're incarcerated. Um, each gift basically should be about $25, and we do deliveries on the 14th of December. So we will need the gifts back, we're hoping by the 8th of December this year, it's kind of quick, um, but, or you could even bring them before the 14th, we'll keep the gifts here in the back. And Jean is also gonna tell you about something else. Um, we also like to bless the families with uh, bread, whether it's homemade or cooked bread, you know, banana, cranberry, whatever. Um, so we do need 15. We have 15 families. So if we could have people let us know if they're willing to make one or two so that um, we can make sure that's covered. And when you take a child's name off the back, there's a form to sign. Just sign your name so that we know who's got what gift. But I'd love if we could bless all these families this year. Thank you. Let's stand and sing one last song. Mm -hmm. 